So our first speaker has been an Alice enthusiast, I want to say her entire life, um, nearly her entire life. Um, but she has been an active member of the Lewis Carroll Society since 2008, and she has been my wife for these past 15 years. Well, Ladies and gentlemen, yeah. my wife, yeah. Wendy Lane Crandall. Thank you, Matt. He was supposed to also say the love of his life, so allow me to say it. Um, <laughs> my primary here reason to be here today is to embarrass my family, and I'm, I'm without a doubt that I will succeed at least that. Um, my daughter once asked me, I think when she was in junior high, that, that really, you know, important question, you know, um, if I were to be a rapper, what would my name be? And I was like, oh. and I told her I thought my name would be Tag Tucker, yo, right, you know, because I, I can't stand when people's tags fly out of the back of their shirts or stuff. And I was told by a, a guy who could have been a rapper that I would have had a very short career. And um, she has since told me, and this is more along the line of this talk, that my real rapper name would be TMI. So, um, so. Too many what? <laughs> um, I, I believe in making long stories long. My dad's favorite phrase was to shorten the story a bit, and every time he said it, it was too late. You know, so, um, you know, that's just the, the way it goes. So, um, since I've never done this before, you guys are a test audience. It'll, it'll happen once and probably once only. So, you, you know, we'll have to stop again. How do I make this go forward? Use your clicker. Oh. Just turn to the right. How awesome is that? I feel like a professor or something. Okay, this is where it starts for me. Um, this is my mother uh, in 19, uh, or 1967. And she uh, didn't do a lot of this, but I only remember her reading aloud to me Alice in Wonderland. And it was one of the uh, books or stories that was included in this bookshelf for boys and girls. And I thought it was really strange because the text was in columns. You know, you didn't go all the way across the page. It was very disruptive. But it did have the Tenniel illustrations. So my very first um, experience was with the Tenniel illustrations and the original, original text. Now this was, of course, a um, encyclopedia for youth, and I only kept this one. <laughs> All the rest of them were gone, but this was my first Alice experience. And um, that, the, the shaded woman with the sunglasses is my, is her mother. So uh, she comes up pretty shortly along, so I wanted to mention that is, is uh, my mom's mother. Oh, that's right, I get to move the thing. Okay, I thought I'd throw in a grade school picture, you know, just so you get the idea of <laughs> this is where I was when I started. Also, you know, before videotape and, you know, all those things, we had a um, Disney Records uh, subscription. And we had one of those big wooden consoles to play stereo records. And I would put on this particular one, this was my absolute favorite, and it had a book that you could turn the pages along with it. I'd set it up, and then I would stretch out on the carpet in front of the speaker and just do this. And I'm sure the grooves in the record went around and around. That, and this was my first introduction um, to the Disney Alice, because I, at this point I had never been to Disneyland, never seen the movie or anything, but I just heard it. So. Um, Obviously, the songs and the voice were very important to me. Um, this is what, when, it, when it got real. Um, and that is back in 19, uh, uh, what, 1971. Uh, I was 10 years old. And we used to go to, we lived in California, and we used to go to West Virginia every summer to visit with uh, family. So the maternal grandmother that was in that other photo, she had had eight children, and, had, and she was a teacher. So there were many, many books. And her offer to us was, uh, to get us to look at the books, <laughs> it was if you could find a book with your parent's name in it, you could keep it. And so I poured through the bookshelves, you know, looking for it. And uh, my mom's is at the top. Her name is Reba Coulter. And it looks like her younger sister adopted it at some point and put Krista Coulter in there. But I said, oh, she was on top. It's mine. And um, um, this book I started really reading avidly in the fifth grade. Um, my claim is that I read it 50 times. I got to the point where um, I could recite sections of it, and we also we had a subscription to Reader's Digest, and they had um, we also the, had the compilation books that had the Reader's Digest novels, and I could they were abridged. I knew what was missing, you know. So I I knew that text like the you know the back of my hand, and this isn't this talk, but I have had a lot of times to think about why um, Alice was so important to me. And uh, a lot of it has to do with the fact that she wasn't a princess, and she's not described physically. 
You know, it, interesting things didn't happen to her because she was pretty. Uh, she's not saved by, you know, a male at the end of it. And she talked back. I mean, come on. There's a queen that says, off with your head. And she says, nonsense, you know? And I was like, yeah. I mean, so it was like the first really ultimate girl power. And, and actually, I kind of feel like Alice is sort of genderless. It's just, she just is, you know? And um, so I claimed her, you know? Um, she's mine. And so uh, I still have the, well, obviously, I still have this book. It was actually much better condition when I got it. <laughs> but, you know, you read something 50 times as a kid, and, and you're going to beat it to death. Oops, sorry, I went too far. Um, so there's a big gap now. I went through all the rest of, you know, teenage dumb and all that. Um, this is a little bit of a cheat, because this is me in 1981. Uh, and purple, yeah, and you, my, my other passion life, ice cream. But this was the, my very first purchase. I was at UC Santa Barbara, and we were at a um, flea market. And I saw this Cheshire cat pin. I'm like, oh, it's a Cheshire cat. It was the very first piece of Alice merchandise that had ever come in front of me. And I said, well, I have to buy it. And so, and I, of course, I still have it. But that was my, my, my very first purchase. Should I point this at something? Oh, oh is that too far? Oops. Oh, good. All right. Um, some of my first jobs were at, were at South Coast Plaza in Southern California. I worked for Bullocks. I went on to work for Nordstrom. Um, I was young, I was married, and I was poor. <laughs> and those things usually go together. Uh, the book here in the center was the, I was at Pickwick Books, if anybody ever remembers Pickwick Books. That I, I said, this is so pretty. You know, it's the, it's colored. Do you have those? It's also for it was also for sale at Disneyland. It's they, apart. Yeah. <laughs> Ooh, this one it has the um, uh, that clear you know, book jacket on it, so that you just know it's important because it has that extra layer. And it was and so this is the first time I spent my money on a Alice book. I'm like, this is my first Alice book, and and that I wasn't given to me. Um, now in the Rizzoli bookstore, you know, just the name, the Italian name, you know it's going to be expensive. It was very close to Nordstrom where I was working and they had this book here. And uh, I believe it was $160, which was like probably more than my car payment. And I used to go on my lunch hour and visit it. So I kind of went by page by page, and I dropped by and like set it back and then I go back to work. Another day I'd come in and read a little bit more of it. <laughs> I'm surprised they didn't say this isn't a library, you need to, you know, go. But um, um, thanks to Joel Birnbaum at the, in the 2008 meeting, uh, he's like, Wendy, I, I have one for you. Or whatever. Well, for a small fee, but it was, it, was, it was a small fee. I'm like, hey, you know, it was worth waiting for. Got a, I got a discount. What do I point this at? Ah, and this is, now things change again. It's like um, Gemco, I don't know if any of you guys know Gemco, but this was Southern California and we shopped there all the time. And when you came into the front of the building, they had a book section and they had tables of books. And I was there for an errand, I remember, and I just caught this out of the corner of my eye and I bought this Martin Gardner's Annotated Alice. And for me, this was the Rosetta Stone because I now knew what a comfit was. I knew what bathing machines were. I mean, there were so many things about Victorian England that I didn't have the slightest idea. I just kind of went along with it. You know, when I read the story, I was like, oh, there's comfits in her pockets. You know, I don't know. She's got several, but not one for herself. Um, uh, also, his picture uh, at the, the New York um, statue, I didn't know that statue existed. <laughs> so once that I saw that picture, I was like, well, I have to find this statue. And of course, you know, many, many trips to New York. I mean, this was two. 1990 something and uh, my friend of mine took that for me so the next iconic I, I actually put little stars these are marking the day with a white stone so um, and this is one of the first ones in 1983 I met my best friend who's a Disney artist uh, 38 years this year and that's Stacia Martin I was actually leaving California at that time to move out here to Virginia and she painted uh, the teacup for me it says oh yeah, it says, ah, yes, indeed, the tea. We must have a cup of tea inside the cup and then the, um, the March hair. This is us two weeks ago. So I'm kind of like saying, no, oh, we're still in there, you know? And for my 50th birthday, uh, she did the painting in the center for me for, um, for my birthday. And she, you know, being with Disney and uh, also when she worked at the park in 1983, I was talking this over with Matt. Uh, the lack of merchandise there was. There was a music box that you could buy that was, that was done by Russell Schroeder, and it does play I'm Late, and Alice is running, at least it made sense, because everything played When You Wish Upon a Star. And then there was the uh, little tea set, which has this really great die-cut box that Russell Schroeder also 
uh, designed. They had the park figures. You could get like one of six different characters. And there was a cloisonne, Cheshire Cat pin. You know, that's, that's the all important thing to have. That was it. You know, you could comb the whole park and that would be all you could ever get. So Stacia had started kind of giving me things and we started doing things together. Um, I wanted to say, then in 1989, kind of, kind of jump around a little bit, my daughter Haley was born. And you can see I started early trying to thrust her into the Alice you know, characters. And, and you can see that she kind of bonded with the right, white rabbit there. So um, she was three when I stuck her in a 4T Alice dress. And uh, she's holding a centenary copy of, of Alice there. And the white rabbit is from Japan. So still bonding with the white rabbit. And Haley, two, we figured 2013? Um, yeah, her, the first year you moved to California, uh, she was cosplaying the white rabbit, you know, uh, there. And then, uh, well, I was just saying, and you were the white rabbit your freshman year of, of high school. So, you know, and we had the attraction poster from Disney from the year she was born, so she never had a time in life where she didn't have huge Alice images thrust at her. So, um, before I left California, I took an English class at the local community college, and of course I was going to write an Alice paper. <laughs> it's horrific. But I selected a, 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 several books from the library there, and this was one of them. And I was, I have to admit, you know, is Janice here? I, saw, I told Matt, I'm like, you should have seen the daggers in Janice's eyes when I told this story. I, I thought about stealing it from the library. I was just like, I've never seen a book like this. I'm like, if I, if I don't give it back, I'll just have to pay a restocking fee, and I'm leaving the state. And you know, I mean, but you know, I don't feel like you should be punished for the things you think about. I mean, because I would just be in life prison, probably, prob <laughs> probably you know, lethal injection, you know, if I did all the things I thought about. But um, I did give the book back, very nobly and sadly. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> And, and I was rewarded for, you know, for my good behavior there. Um, when I moved to Virginia, I also noticed there was a lot done by the University of Virginia um, press. And, um, and I thought, oh, that's kind of exciting. Maybe I'm moving to the right part of the country. I know there'll be more Alice stuff. There was an advertisement for an uh, antiquarian bookstore in Middleburg. And they were advertising some original letters and signatures of Dodgson and I was like oh, I've never seen that before this is great let's get in the car it's drivable and we went we, and it was in a townhouse this old townhouse we paid our little fee and we went up to the top and I was walking around and looking at all these things in the glass and there's only one other person in the room and it was an, an older gentleman and um, and he was you know kind of like this so the owner of the shop comes in and he's holding this book and he goes and the guy says oh yes my book and I went oh my god you know, it's like I'm like I'm in the room with the book right you know and I went it's for sale, right? And the, guy, and the guy looked at me and he goes, I suppose you're gonna have it autographed. I'm thinking, yeah, because I'm gonna pretty much do anything. You know, and so he, I asked him if he would autograph it and I told him, I said, listen, I used your book for this paper and I was so sorely tempted to steal it from the library and I did it. <laughs> and he said, oh my dear, I'm so glad your virtue was spared. <laughs> and I said, you know, and I, I did tell him that my virtue was long gone. <laughs> but, and I wouldn't have, and I would have given it up if, if, if you would, you know, to get him to sign the book. So I didn't sign the book. And, um, and so that was February 2nd, 1992. Haley was a, was a toddler, you know, by that time, but um, I actually, for a while, when people had asked me what I collect, I tried to make it sound more highbrow, and I said, I collect inscribed reference text, you know, so, you know, th that made it better. The blue book in the middle, I'm sure you guys are all familiar with the pair about Alice the Gross and Dunlap, Stacia found a copy first, and she showed it to me, and she said, you know, I really love you, but I can't give you this book, <laughs> and I was like, Really? <laughs> I should have it. So that started a quest, and that actually is what kind of got me into like Griffin Books at, in New York and some other places, and putting my name in, and trying to get better books. And I became a buyer at Nordstrom, I was making a little bit more money, and I had once spent as much as $100 on a book. So, and actually he t called me once and told me that he had the book for me, and I was just beside myself, and I actually visited there, and I always mispronounce this, but it's the non parallel Perel, Perel, you know, which was, is a terrific book. I bought it, but I was like, it's not the one I was looking for though, you know. So then I heard, he says, well, to try to make up for it, he messed up. He says, what you need is this Love It book that's coming out. And yeah, it's like, you, this is what you really have to have. So I, um, he asked for a deposit too. I mean, 
money before I've gotten something. And I lived in Virginia at this, this time, so I gave him the money. Months and months went by, and I never got this book. And I called him, and I said, where's my book? And he's like, they've all gone out. They've all been sent out. And I said, I didn't get my book. And he goes, there are no more. And I understand, I think I heard last night, that it was a pretty small run of books. I mean, there was just no way of getting it. And he goes, OK, uh, let me make it up to you. He had all three of these Paramount books, and he made me a really good deal on them to ease my, my pain. So searching for the Paramount books. So now I search for the Lovett book, because of course when I first met you know, both, both Charlie and Stephanie, I was like, you guys have any of these kicking around in the basement? And they're like, no, no. And I told Matt that, you know, look for one for me. I said, but I don't want to give up a kidney you know, to get it. And last year for my birthday, I got one. So, so you know, we fi finally made it. A, a guy that, um, when Haley was about two, I went back to work briefly for the Disney store. And you think, like, what has this got to do with Alice other than the other Disney stuff? They still didn't really have much in the way of Alice merchandise other than like the figures. But this is how I met David Schaefer, is uh, you would come into the Disney store and invariably be buying some you know, Alice. And I'd say, oh, Alice is my very favorite character. And I was supplied with uh, his business card at George Mason. He says, what you need to do is join the Lewis Carroll Society. And I was like, OK, that, that sounds like. And this kind of went on for a few years. you know. So I, I knew of David. Um, I knew of the society. But I, I don't know. I just it wasn't quite there. I was you know, working and trying not to starve and you know, raise a child. Um, and then I went into management. That's really foolish. But uh, <laughs> um, then this is the next uh, day I mark with a white stone, is Stacia had a party in, as a theme party in honor of, fest, of Annette Funicello's uh, 50th birthday. And she introduced me to Matt Crandall. So everything kind of changed uh, then. We, well, yeah, yeah, my whole life has been a mess ever since. Our, how long I said our interaction was a couple minutes? You said it was like 30 seconds. It was, brief. it was very brief. He asked for my address, said he was an Alice collector. Could we correspond? And Haley was not on her best behavior. She was a toddler. <laughs> she were two, right? And I was like, you know, I said, you know, get my address from Stacia. And he's like, oh, it's so hard to get stuff from her. Can you please give me your address? And I did. And you, my mother, was sitting, sitting at that table. Um, anyway, I gave him my address. We did stay in touch over the next, um, let's see, that was 1991, the next five years. But very briefly, I, you had an ad in the back of Toy Story magazine? Toy? Toy Shop. Toy Shop magazine, where it was like, I collect Alice. I bore, buy more Alice things than anyone else. And I just kind of felt like it was like, yeah, well, that's true. Good point. Good point. Yeah. But I felt it was sort of a challenge. And I remember I called him because there was a Charlotte Henry photograph that was coming up at an auction with a really low you know, estimate of like $50. I thought, I could probably get this. Oh, not if Matt Crandall's bidding on it. You know, and I called him. He's like, yeah, I'm bidding on it. Well, neither of us got it. But um, we stayed in touch. He actually sent me those, those glasses one time. He says, oh, I thought these were Disney. They're not. And he sent them to me. And I said, you know, if you're ever in this area, you should come by and see me. And, and we could you know, do stuff or whatever. And so um, um, he did come back, or he came out in the area in 1996, and that is when everything kind of changed. Now, a lot of muddy water, you know, that comes along after this. And in, then in um, 1999, I, I gave him an ultimatum that he had to move to Virginia. So I don't believe in long, you know, long distance relationships. So he did, and he made it with a three month, you know, leeway. I, t I gave him until New Year's Eve, and he made it out in August. So, um, so he did, he did well. Stacia said at this point that we were going to you know, be together. She says, I'll never be able to convince anybody. She goes, if you marry Matt, I'll never convince anyone that you didn't marry him for his collection, <laughs> which occupied three storage units and his apartment. I said, if I marry him, you know, I said, I'm marrying him in spite of that collection. You know, it's like Jacob Marley's chain you know, that like, you know, comes along you know, with you. Um, Matt, when he was trying to seal the deal, <laughs> um, introduced me to Catherine Beaumont, who Stacia knew. But there wasn't the right social setup for her to introduce me to, to Catherine because it has, there's a, this whole list of proprieties that have to be observed. Matt didn't have those scruples. So uh, <laughs> he's like, I'm trying to sleep with this woman. So I'm going you know, to introduce her to Kathy. And uh, it was a surprise. And the surprise was almost a shock. Uh, fortunately, he did give me a little bit of advance notice so that I could change clothes and take Advil. And, mm -hmm. and, and it was a lovely evening. And, I, and we've become friends um, since then. And she was already friends with Stacia, so I always think that good people know each other, and, and it's wonderful. So, um, and then, and then um, Kathy did the most wonderful thing for me, was five years ago when I had my 50th. Oh, when I, oops, button. 
Oh, by the way, yeah, Matt, I didn't recognize him between Festinet and this. I don't think he cut his hair between Festinet and, and here, so I was like, I don't think you're the same guy. But this was our, the first time we ever presented ourselves in public as a couple. Uh, so there's Kathy, and um, on my 50th birthday, <laughs> um, I, I, I said I was going to ply her with wine, and I have no, my pride has, is very inexpensive, so um, I asked her to sign the wall of our, of our um, den going downstairs, and then later we painted the mushroom and everything around it, you know, and so it's, but it's more indication that we're never, ever going to move because uh, it's there. But it was like the best birthday gift I could have ever, and, and Matt, I did tell him, he's like, wow, she's coming for your birthday, and I said, there's something you can do that I can't do. Really, I mean, I said, because we do swing dancing, you know, lead, follow. I said, you can ask her to dance, you know. And um, so uh, Mindy Carson's uh, Twas Brillig, uh, Matt said, I think they're playing our song. And so he did get to dance with her. So now she is an actress, Catherine Beaumont? That yes. Okay. She was the voice of Alice for the Disney oh. 1951 film. Okay. And she was the voice of Wendy in 1953, right thereafter. So for me, it's like a, a double okay. thing. I have a picture of Alice and Wendy kissing, and, oh. and Matt said that was probably too much. So uh, it's, not in the, it's not in the screen thing here. Um, the, the Sotheby's uh, Alice auction came up the same year that we planned to get married. And uh, so we took a train trip up to New York, and I said, I have to see this while it all is still together. And you know, I still can't believe her wedding ring was in that auction. Um, and to see a piece of, you know, see her clothing. And as we, we spent so much time in that tiny room, but we, you know, everything. There was a small photograph, and it was in the tens of thousands of dollars, this photograph. And Matt like nudged me, and he's like, what do you think? Wedding photograph. Wedding photograph. I'm like, yeah, a wedding, you know. So um, we did, you know, we did get to see it, and of course, we I think we got to see or hear of some more of it at the Rosenbach when, because they said they acquired some for this. Because I said it's going to go to the Four Winds, and we have that catalog in hardback and paperback. Um, so of course, we did get married, and you can see the same cast of characters keeps cropping up. Haley's, of course, is, is still there. Stacia is my maid of honor. She said she was glad that I decided to get married again, so she could be my maid of honor, and. Um, this is part of our ceremony, which includes a lot of fan fiction because we're Harry Potter fans, we're Jane Austen fans. But you'll talk about our vows here. You'll see here it says, with all that they are and all that they have, including the collection. <laughs> and, then it, and he says, Matt, look meaningfully at Matt. <laughs> Waking or dreaming, you know, they will be one. So when you visit the Jeppies Matt Crandall collection, remember, contractual evidence with witnesses. So, um, we bought a house, and the, the idea was to not have a storage unit, so what we did was we crammed everything into the house and tried to live around the boxes, and I'm trying to think, for almost eight years, um, there was one room where the boxes touched the ceiling in some parts, and I said you used to have to like tie a rope around your waist and feed it in there, and in 2007, Matt came to me and he says, the Lewis Carroll Society, you know, that David Schaefer belongs to, right? Uh, which he had met him in LA. He said, they're coming to DC in 2008. What do you think about us having an open house? And I'm like, I mean, I thought he was nuts, but I didn't want to, but you don't want to discourage somebody from trying to work on their junk. So it was like, sure, whatever. He told me on New Year's Eve that uh, Joel Birnbaum had said, yeah, you guys are on the schedule. And I said, Matt, what are the odds that we could be ready to show anything in four months. And he's like, I don't know. And I'm like, well, I think we should figure it out. So we started on New Year's Day unboxing things. It was really great. We're like, we're in the 80s because I'm in this Tokyo stuff. You know, I mean, we, I was, and we literally divided up the rooms like watches, block, you know, books, plush, records, you know, we just dolls and we just kept like doing this. We got it all unpacked. It looked like we were moving because there were just so many boxes out in front of our house. And then we contacted our friends. We had two friends from California that came out. Uh, Hans, Stacia's boyfriend, came out from Denmark. Um, we enlisted help from everywhere we could get it. And so um, at the very end, I think we shoved some stuff in the guest room. But, um, but darn it, we did it. And then uh, I, I actually, since I couldn't tell you a lot what the things were and stuff. I let the people that were more involved do that. I painted the all of a sudden she fell. And it says down, down, down. So that's a lot different. And then I, I met Stephanie Lovett for the first time ever. 
And I had a book of hers that Matt had had her sign for me, and but she was here live and in person, so I was like, I got her here, sign it again, sign it again. And uh, you know, and Selwyn was totally confused. Like it was like he was like, you know, he's like, and then when he saw the books upstairs, he's like, oh really? This is quite nice. And I'm like, thank you, I think. Um, and you know, I got both of them. Oh, and then Haley had a great time with uh, with Mark. You know the you know the academics. So that was 2008, and then it changed. We came to every meeting that we reasonably could, that there wasn't a conflict or we were out of money for plane tickets. But we, we've tried to, and they've been great. And I'll tell you, one of the main things was, is we went to, um, when, when Andrew Sel, Selin, Selon, Selin, that, yes, him. When he stepped down as president, he did a little presentation and he, ta he showed his first books of when he, and how he started. And I thought, wow, I've met you all these times, but I didn't know this about you. And um, I was saying, I wish there were more of those so that I knew pe people better. And someone said to me, they're like, oh, we already all know each other. I'm like, but I don't know you, you know? And like, so, so anyway, this is sort of inspired by him, you know, with this. I wanted to say that we've, collecting has changed a little bit. I don't buy quite as many books as I, as I used to. It really has to be something different. Um, this gentleman over here, I can't wait to tell him I put him in a slide. Um, uh, Brian. <laughs> um, What's his last name? Ramsey. Ramsey, right, Brian Ramsey. He is the owner of a, of a company called Theme Park Connections, and he buys all the cast off from the Disney parks. And we were at Dayton, Ohio. We've gone three times, and we are going again, where we sell off, you know, the stuff of our collection. Um, I, we were at a table next to him for two days, and he would say, like, I'm going to the restroom. Watch my table. If, it, if anybody buys anything, you got to give me half. <laughs> okay? So at our table is almost tables are almost exclusively Alice, right? So there's no doubt of what I had. And so on the last day, I tugged on his sleeve and I said, if you ever get anything unusual, Alice in Wonderland, you would call me, right? And I'm like, and I was walking away and he said, well, I've got a couple of leaves from the attraction. I, I like stopped and thought, oh my God, and tried to decide how, my, how much I value my bodily organs um, and tried to like, how are we gonna do this? Matt and I did end up flying to Florida, renting this horrible truck and trucking these leaves and that's the top and that's the bottom and that's a, um, she was about five, I think, in there, but we have the leaves and so my goal, or one of my many goals, is to make a Wonderland garden and there are, of course, things from the park. Um, Stacia gave uh, Matt these two lanterns for his 50th birthday and these are from California Disneyland, the others are from Florida, that hung over top the uh, teacup ride. So uh, as long as we can hide from our HOA, um, you know, I like Wonderland. So here's Maggie again. Uh, you know, of course, we've got Matt has the exhibit uh, this year, and you know, this is eight years later, and the first time that the Lewis Carroll Society is back in our kind of home turf. Um, we're always talking about younger participants and bringing in that next generation. And I was always saying that we've made a few efforts in this area as well. Uh, uh, Maggie has had a tea party at our house, and, uh, and and she has sung for us "Twinkle Twinkle Little Bat," which we rewarded her with a tea set. And she came to the premiere party dressed as Alice. Uh, this is another friend of ours, and and Zeke is just turned one a few months ago, and of course he's got the little glasses on and his little clock, and I'm like, he's just you know adorable. This is our niece Gigi, and uh, we have told her recently that we were going to read her Alice. And we came over to visit, and she's like, where's the Alice book? I'm, I'm ready. <laughs> so, so she started demanding it, which is cool. So uh, this was sent to us by, does it work? Yeah, click it once more to the right. Once more to the right. Oh, nope. sorry, go back. Oh, sorry. Tech support, yay. I'll with our heads. Who are you? A queen. You are. Say again. No, so she adjusted the crown first before making the the the, uh, the pronouncement. So um, her dad sent that to us. So I'm like, they're obviously supporting us, you know, as well. And um, I'm really happy again that you know Matt had a big dream of having a 50th anniversary party for Alice, and it, he, instead I made him move to Virginia and buy us a house and marry me. So he couldn't quite work it in there. So now it's the 65th anniversary, and you'll see the same cast of characters once again. Haley is the White Rabbit, and with her roommate Ashley, who was a really great Cheshire Cat, and her fiber optics 
faded away and came back like the Cheshire Cat. And, and she and Haley worked on their costumes. Matt's best man, of course, you saw him at the wedding. Um, Stacia and her boyfriend Hans, he came out from Denmark. And then Catherine Beaumont joined us, of course, from Burbank and spent the time with us. And me and Matt. So it's like the same group that um, came, you know, before. So there you go, full, full circle and way over time. <laughs>